Fairshare CSA Coalition was founded in 1992 as the Madison Eaters Revolutionary Front. The revolution was dropped from the name fairly quickly in favor of the Madison Area CSA Coalition, MAXAC for short. The concept that CSA is a revolutionary way to access food and support local farms is still infused in our work these 30 years later. When the name MAXAC became Fair Share CSA Coalition in 2012, we understood that putting fairness, equity, and access right in our name was an important way to center the values that have been part of the organization from the beginning. Fairshare was founded on the mission of connecting farmers and eaters through community-supported agriculture and is still committed to the vision of CSA as the backbone of a strong local food system. The group of us, which was about eight people in the beginning, were, were mostly eaters. I mean, everyone's an eater, but um, we were not farmers, although uh, a few people in the group um, had farms and had farming background. And what was actually quite unique about the situation in terms of how CSA has was spreading at the time was that normally what would have happened was that group of people would have worked with a farm um, to start a CSA program at that farm. But our group had bigger ambitions and a bigger vision. And so rather than just start one farm, we did outreach to farms that we know of. Um, we went to the farmer's market and talked with farmers. And so we just, we started um, with the people that we knew and eventually found eight farms that were willing to give this a try uh, during that first growing season, which would have been 1993. And, and then it's only grown since then. Um, so critical um, to, to MACSAC and Fair Share's success was that it's always been a group of farmers and urban activists. They had the energy when we, the farmers, were completely swamped with the duties of farming. So I always saw that that mix, the urban, you know, the non-farmers and the farmers as being such this, this incredible combination of uh, interests and energy. And we really complemented each other. Being a member of MACSAC in those days was a great opportunity to, uh, to meet with other CSA farmers and share ideas, um, share production techniques, share um, ideas about growing our membership or connecting with uh, members at that at that time i don't think there was any place else in the country that was like as welcoming to a new grower as the madison area was and because of maxic back in the old days that you know it was a lot about survival and i was farming when there really was no organic market and I always liked the direct connection with people. So when we heard about CSA, we thought this would be a good way to connect with more people than what you can six hours at a farmer's market. And that has proved to be true. You know, early on, it was just critical, both in terms of camaraderie, connection, network, context for what I was do what we were doing. And again, with a very unusual and kind of beautiful approach in that CSA farmers, and definitely back then all of us coming together, but I think it's probably still true, don't see each other as competitors. They, I think we were very clear with with each other that the more good education we all do around these issues, the more market we're creating. I remember some of the early meetings of MAXIC where a group of us were sitting around, we were so excited about the potential for CSA in the Madison area, but there was that one sticky point of CSA required people, households to have a pretty substantial income to have discretionary income. And the challenge before us is how do you make 
an arrangement like CSA more accessible to households that do not have uh, a large income? I mean, it's part of the nature of the organic farming world and of small farming in general, is that a lot of us end up trying to sell our goods to places and people that can afford it. And in a way that can allow us to make a living uh, working the land. And there's always this tension between wanting to make this food accessible to all while farmers who aren't necessarily making a great living <laughs> are struggling to get by. So there's this there's this tension and on all the farms in Maxac that I came across always like felt that tension and had this desire for that food to be accessible to all and myself included very strongly. And so that's where partner shares came in and helped fill that gap. When the partner shares program began in the late 90s, it was serving around 10 households primarily in the Madison area, and providing them with assistance towards the cost of their CSA share. Today, the program has expanded to serve over 200 households across 74 cities, 34 counties, and five states, which is pretty amazing. The Maxec first food book turns out it was printed in 1996. For many, many years, that food book brought in a lot of revenue for the organization and also for partner shares. And the A to Z, I still use it all the time. It's an amazing cookbook. Eaters needed to know what to do with kohlrabi and, and things they were getting in their shares that they were unfamiliar with. And that cookbook really launched the organization. Now there's a number of resources like that, but it was such a first of its kind that it really rocked there for a while and was all over the country. And, you know, it just, again, it was that, that newness of the idea of eating seasonally and eating locally and, and educating consumers about that at a time when it really wasn't being talked about. From a volunteer-run organization funded by a cookbook and focused on the Madison area to a fully staffed nonprofit that has a multi-state network, Fairshire has changed more than just its name over the years. Still, many things have stayed constant, including, and perhaps most importantly, the emphasis on collaboration and community among Fairshire farmers. We wanted to start an organization of the farms working together and not competing with one another. I think by continuing to bring farmers together in meetings and having events like the open house and now the listserv where farmers are able to share information with one another. And that to me has been a really important piece of this organization is how we work with a big group of farms that, you know, they really are competing with one another. But it's been great to see that camaraderie and sense of community happen within the and, and persist within the organization. Um, the listserv is amazing because it reaches so many people and so much information goes out on the listserv that it's been a really nice way to reach farmers farther away because um, we were all closer geographically in the early days and it was a little easier to get together um and now it's you know farmers are much farther apart the conversations that happen among the farmers on that listserv and the sharing that happens of resources knowledge supplies plants like i don't think there's anything like it like just that kind of a broad a broad and deep experience and just the kind of the vulnerability, if you will, of what the farmers are willing to share or ask. It's really moving to me to see how connected the growers are um, through that fair share grower listserv. I think one of the things that's always been really important to fair share um, has been quality of life and a sense of community for the farmers involved. Uh, and I'm glad to see that over time that has not taken a back seat um, to the other aspects of, of programming and the other goals. Um, farmers farm because they're meant to farm, because they want to, because there's quality and, and 
quality of life and value there. And we need to work to preserve that because it doesn't just preserve itself. And because farming is so hard, it's so hard. And the only way we make it better is by working together and creating that sense of community that we really can't replicate elsewhere. So I really love that Fair Share has, has held on to that quality and attention to community. Um, I think that that has been captured in terms of the Veggie Growers Conference and things like that, where it, it treats farmers as the creators of their own knowledge and their own wisdom, not the receivers of that information from, from someone else, from someone who might be, you know, the expert. Um, and I think that that's, that's really special and really powerful. Because in those days, I mean, we take it so for granted now, but that was on the early cusp of even talking about buying locally and what does that mean? What does it mean to know where your food comes from? What does it mean to buy locally? What does it mean local food, local agriculture, farm to table? All of that stuff was not ubiquitous at, at, in any, any way. Um, so there was a huge educational learning curve and, you know, the word community supported agriculture. Nobody knew what that was. Definitely not CSA. Now, now I feel like I can be in almost any company and say CSA. There's some glimmer of knowledge or people are really, really educated about it and been involved for years or whatever. So in that span of time, and I, you know, I credit MACSAC with this a lot, you know, I mean, I know CSA lives beyond um, MACSAC and fair share, but in this area, I feel like that organization had a tremendous amount to do with the fact that these 30 years later, it is ubiquitous and, and not just the CSA terminology and understanding that model, um, but why that model is important in the framework of supporting local agriculture. So it's, you know, it's, it's changed. It's changed me. It's changed. Yeah. It's, it's, it's changed, you know, be, becoming a vegetable grower and a CSA farmer, um, you know, had such an impact on me and who I am and, and who I became. Yeah, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a whole lot of credit to MacSac. Um, it was incredible, the kinds of um, creative ideas um, and dedication that people had to show up time and again and keep working at making something function. Um, it was also, it was a good lesson in not, not resting when one has had one success. Like the barns went great the first time around, but then it just got better and better and better. The first cookbook was excellent. And then every cookbook thereafter was just better and better and better. So that was really, you know, eye-opening for me and so satisfying to be a part of that, to be a part of a group of people that could sit down um, and, and, and come up with a great idea and make it work together. We probably couldn't in, in our wildest dreams imagine where Fair Share is right now. Um, but if we could have, that's what we would have been, that's what we would have been dreaming could happen. Um, it was just so early on in the arc of local food that it was impossible to see that. I think it's, I think it's amazing what's happening now. I think it's wonderful. I feel proud to have been back in the very, very beginning to see what it's become now. I think that's really, really great. I'm so happy that Fair Share is 30 years old. Happy birthday. 